Well, hello and welcome to From the Vicar's Study. It's uh, great to uh, virtually welcome you back into my study. I, I, I'm glad you can't usually see what it's like. It's, it's, do you want to see the rest of the study? Here we go. Look at this. Th those are my books. And the only reason I'm here is because my desk is here, which, which isn't the, the tidiest of desks at the moment. Um, that pile of books there with Isaiah on the top um, or thereabouts in the Adrian Plass book, that's where I put my phone when I'm recording. I've got a printer over there, and uh, that way I've got uh, um, what have I got over there? What can you see? You can see the other end, the other end of the study there. I've got a sofa and uh, a not very tidy coffee table. Uh, so welcome to my study. There you go. You've had a virtual tour. Oh, I've got a door into the back garden as well. There you go. Have a look at that. And uh, I'm still in Anne Libby Common. Um, it's uh, it's great to welcome you here, and. Uh, I want us to think about chapter two, uh, the second kind of two thirds of chapter two of Philippians. There were a, a couple of guys who Paul introduced to us. There was Timothy and there was Epaphroditus. I, remember, I wonder if you remember about them. Uh, Timothy was the chap who uh, was uh, he was going to be a bishop. Basically, he was going to be in he was, he was going to be uh, uh, pastorally overseeing a whole bunch of churches under Paul's direction. And he was going to be the one who was going to train up leaders. He was going to make sure that the gospel was going to be handed down uh, from one generation to the next uh, so that the, the true gospel would be taught to, uh, to many future generations right across the world. Timothy was going to be the part of uh, getting that process kicked off. And yet he was willing to do some of the dog's body work that Paul asked him to do. He was more than happy to do that because he knew that gospel work wasn't all about uh, the upfront leadership stuff. He was happy to just muck in and get on with whatever needed doing. And Epaphroditus, Epaphroditus was quite a striking chap and he almost certainly was not a leader up the front. He was the man he, uh, the Philippians sent to help Paul when Paul was in prison in Rome. You see, if nobody went to help him, Paul would have had no new clothes when his old clothes wore holes in them. He'd probably have very little food, if any at all. If he got sick, there'd be nobody to, uh, to help him out. And when it came to winter, he would have no warm clothes unless he happened to go to jail in a, in a warm, uh, warmer uh, cloak or whatever. Um, and Epaphroditus was sent from Philippi to... Uh, um, to Rome to help look after Paul and uh, uh, he almost died at some point on this trip he was the chap he did walk 500 miles and 500 miles again back to uh, Philippi he was the one who really went out of his way and he was the one he almost paid what many people would call the ultimate cost but you see he knew that even if he died, that wasn't the ultimate cost. Why? Because Epaphroditus and Timothy both had their eyes set on the resurrection. They knew that this life on earth wasn't the only thing. In fact, it's not even the main thing. The main thing is seeing Jesus face to face and being in the new creation, keeping our eyes focused on that day. You see then, it doesn't matter if we're the bishop who's cleaning the loose. And it doesn't matter if we're the one who has inadvertently risked our life for the good of the gospel and the good of God's people. Because we know that there is a greater prize at the end don't we? I wonder, uh, how do you feel about that? What is it? Here's something for you to talk about when the video's ended. It'll finish in a moment. What is it that prevents you from keeping your eyes on the resurrection? Is it having to do the mundane stuff? Is it having to do the dangerous stuff? Is it wanting to be the person up the front or the person in charge? Is it wanting to be risk averse and avoiding the danger? I wonder, why don't you have a think about that? 
if you're with others, think about it together, maybe. Uh, or maybe uh, phone somebody up if you're by yourself or, or maybe jot a few thoughts down in a notebook. That might help you if you're somebody who likes to journal. Let me pray for us. Our Father, we pray that we will be people who keep our eyes on the future. Please, would we be those who look to the resurrection, that we don't count the cost of what's around us and that we don't uh, get distracted. Please help us to keep straining forwards for your glory's sake. Amen. See you soon.